Hey guys, what's up? This is Cody Miller coming at you with yet again another video. Today, we're going to be upgrading my 2012 Mac Mini with a 500GB solid state drive instead of its 500GB mechanical hard drive. Now for this, I'm going to be using my iFixit toolset, a Samsung SSD, a USB to SATA adapter, and a DVD dual layer disk. Now, we're going to have to use a dual layer disk because the ISO is 6.5GB. Now, if you're already running the latest version of Mac OS, you can still download the latest version from the Mac App Store. Now, I'm not going to go over the method for extracting the ISO because it's a rather long and drawn out process, and I'm only going to be using it as a backup in case my primary method fails. But I'll leave a link to this guide that I'm following anyway. My primary method will be actually booting off the USB and entering system restore mode from the hard drive that we pulled out of the Mac to copy the image from our original hard drive to the new SSD. This is useful because we won't have to do any backup restore or anything and our Mac will be exactly the way we left it before we did the hard drive swap. So first we must turn this bottom base plate and lift it off the Mac Mini to get inside of it. And then we'll have to undo these three screws with a T6 driver in order to remove the fan. And once we have removed all the screws, we can very carefully lift up on the fan just a couple of inches till we see this cable here on the back. Now, in order to remove it, we'll simply very carefully lift up on it being very careful not to break it as the wires are very delicate then we can just set it aside with the fan out of the way we can now remove the plastic heat shield on the side this is simply done by removing a single screw holding it in and then we can proceed to gently wiggle it out it is kind of stuck in there a little odd so we just kind of wiggle it a little bit Alright, now we're going to have to switch over from the T6 to the T8 in order to remove the hard drive cage. Now the cage itself is held in with two screws on the right and the left here. And these two center screws are what actually connect to the hard drive to hold it into place. And these again are T8 screws. And now we can proceed to gently lift up on the cage, being very careful not to attach this wire, as this is the Wi-Fi antenna wire. You can see it connects here, and you can actually disconnect this and reconnect it later if you want. Alright, and now we can remove this SATA connector here, and then gently pick up and pull the drive out. Um, it's a little weird in there, so you're going to have to coerce it a little bit, but... Just be patient with it. We can now proceed to remove these two T8 screws from the side of the drive. This is actually the other end of the mounting hardware that actually holds the drive into the front of the actual Mac Mini itself. And just note where the orientation of these screws are on the drive, or whenever you put them on the other drive. Now we can cut this plastic that holds the SATA connector to the drive. You could also peel it off, but I find cutting it is a little easier. And then just place the SATA cable on the new drive. And then you can put these screws back on. Once we've replaced our mounting hardware, we can then put it back into the Mac Mini. To do this, it's best to use a credit card or some kind of business card to align it with the top grommets on the top drive bay. So that way you don't have it for trying to fall into the bottom drive bay, since our SATA cable won't reach from the bottom, and without the extra mounting hardware for the bottom bay, it won't fit in there correctly anyway, as the bottom bay mounting hardware 
only came standard with the Mac Mini Server Edition. Now, once you've got it set in there, it should just sit on these little rubber bits on the end of the motherboard here, and we can then just reattach our SATA cable, and now we can replace our drive cage. If you made the decision to detach the Wi-Fi antenna, now is the time to reattach it. Now, this thing is extremely particular about the way that it fits back in, so some patience is required to get this to align properly, especially with this wire here. But a little bit of patience, and it should seat flush. But like I said, it's very particular. It can take a couple tries to actually get it aligned. Once you get it aligned, I strongly recommend putting on the two outer T8 bolts before continuing to the ones that hold the drive in place. I recommend this simply because of the fact of how particular this is, and I think it's a good idea just to get it held in there before you continue on doing anything else, because it's just going to try to jump out again. And then after you do that, you can install the two inner nuts that actually hold the drive into the cage itself. We can then reinstall the plastic heat shield. This will go in the same way it came out, with just a little bit of coercion and a little bit of wiggling to get it back in there in a counterclockwise movement. Once we've done that, we can then proceed to reinstall the fan. First, we'll just re-plug in the connector that we removed, and then we'll line the first screw back up into its hole, tighten it back down, and then proceed to reinstall the final two screws holding the fan in. And once we've done that, we can then proceed to rebolt on the stubborn bottom lid, which kind of takes a little bit of force and time and wiggling to get it on there. And approaching the end of our journey, we can then reconnect our Mac, hook up our old hard drive as a USB drive to boot from. We then power it on while holding the Alt key to enter the recovery on the yellow drive, which is our USB external drive. On newer Macs, this is done by holding Command and pressing R to enter recovery mode. Once we've booted up into the Mac OS Utilities, we can then select Disk Utility. And then once our volumes load, we can select our new internal drive, select Restore, and select our USB drive or our originating Macintosh HD and click Restore. This will copy everything from our USB drive that was our primary hard drive onto our new solid state drive. Once completed, we can then simply restart our computer and allow it to reboot from our SSD, enjoying the much faster loading times and much less delay while still maintaining our same exact operating system with all our apps exactly how we left it. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and or found it informative. And until next time, have a good one.